Hello and welcome, Rossoneri fans. Welcome back to this new edition of our AC Milan Talk. Today is our very last episode of this season and uh, we're going to be discussing everything that's happened to uh, AC Milan in the very last week. Of course, I'm not alone here. Sheridan Bird, welcome back. Hi, Juicy. Hi, everybody. Today is going to be a very special episode. I'm really looking forward to it. Adriano Del Monte, giant version of you today. <laughs> It's a pleasure, guys. Good to be with you, even in this giant capacity, but looking forward to it. It's a very important episode, the one that we're going to go through. A lot of things happened since we last met with Brady, so let's begin. Let's start from the very last game, the one against Juventus. A beautiful victory, beautiful goal from Olivier Giroud. Let's start there, Sheridan. It's always great to beat Juventus. Um, whatever season they're having, whatever struggles they're having, they're still Juventus. They're still one of the biggest names in Italian football. So to go to Turin, to go to that stadium, to keep a clean sheet and to get the three points was fantastic from Mr Pioli's side at the end of the season when fatigue is building up and uh, the matches are getting more and more difficult. But it was a really good achievement. Also, we are officially qualified for the next Champions League. We just saw the table, Adriano. You took the words out of my mouth there, Juicy. Champions League qualification, they're just super important. We've discussed it, obviously, in the recent weeks with the top four up for grabs. So many clubs in the running and to have done it now relatively comfortably with a match to spare is very pleasing. But this ball in here from Calabria, Olivier Giroud, again, stands up, steps up in the most important moments. He's done it again here. And a goal that is very, very crucial for the Rossoneri going into next season, because as we've discussed this season, the run in the semi-final of the Champions League was brilliant, but the club need to maintain this momentum and consistency amongst Europe's elites. So the fact that they're there, they'll be there again. We've got plenty of Champions League football to come next season. It's a very exciting time. And with the success of this Sunday, actually AC Milan beat Juventus both times they met this season and they deserve to go through besides everything that's happened off the field for uh, when it comes to Juventus, Jordan. Six points out of six against Juventus is a really good achievement. It's uh, it's the double over the Bianco Neri, and you can see what it means. As as we keep saying, uh, Juventus are still Juventus, and it's still a feather in Milan's cap to get six points from the uh, team from Turin. Right, and Olivier Giroud once again has the chance to score in a very important match. Actually, the first time he scored against Juventus while wearing the Rossoneri jersey, Adriano. As I said before, he just finds a way to step up and make it count when it matters most. And he's that player. He's done that for large parts of his career. We know that he was brought in for his experience and quality. And that shows. In moments like this, it shows because you do not do this by chance. He continually steps up at the moments that are really important. And look, whatever role he continues to play for this club going forward, I think he certainly left his mark and he'll forever remain uh, in the hearts of Rossoneri fans. But hopefully it's still plenty of chapters to come and going into next season's Champions League especially, a lot of things more to come for this squad and they can build from there going forward. That's right, Adriano. And now we're going to be listening to the words of Stefano Pioli, our coach's words after the qualification for the next Champions League. È stata una bella vittoria stasera, è un bel raggiungimento per la terza volta, per il terzo anno consecutivo, insomma il Milan giocherà la Champions League, quindi questo è una sicuramente importante e, e credo che tutti gli anni questa squadra stia facendo dei progressi, sia individualmente sia collettivamente, poi ci saranno delle cose da, giust da aggiustare come è normale che sia, se vogliamo continuare a crescere, questo è sicuro. Era stato comunque anche l'anno scorso un po' il nostro... Il nostro difetto è quello di non riuscire a, a fare tanti punti con le squadre, tra virgolette, un po' più, un, un po' meno di, con un valore inferiore. E questo ci dovrà fare riflettere per capire che, come intervenire, cosa fare, sia a livello mio, diciamo, di, di gioco, di soluzione, sia chiaramente a livello di caratteristiche di, di giocatori, perché credo che, soprattutto in quelle partite lì, 
serve, serve la qualità del singolo giocatore, serve il guizzo del giocatore, serve la giocata del giocatore, serve la palla inattiva che, che abbiamo avuto poco. Insomma, ci sono, secondo me ci sono, ci sono sempre dei motivi quando i numeri sono così grossi e quindi bisogna essere bravi a cercare di intervenire. These were the words of our coach Stefano Pioli. Now eyes on the next goal, the one, the uh, last match against Verona in uh, San Siro. It's our chance to say goodbye for uh, for now to the fans. Of course, now Elas Verona will not be easy because they're actually fighting against relegation. Sure. Yeah, there's something very important riding on it for Elas, uh, but it's also a great chance for Milan to say goodbye and thank you for this season to the fans at San Siro to put on a show and just right. to give everyone something to remember over the summer months, which will be without football, although uh, because of the friendlies, those months are never too long, but it'll be a nice uh, thank you and goodbye for now to the uh, wonderful Milan fans. Adriano, can it be tricky? Of course it can, but look, it could be it, it can be a celebration. Again, there was certainly a point where, well, for all the clubs in the running for Champions League, football Champions League was at risk. I think for Mr. Pioli and the team to have endured what they have over the earlier months in this calendar year, to have made it to a semi-final, to have now qualified for next season's Champions League, there's plenty to celebrate. Look, we'll, we'll see how the Mr. lines up his squad, whether there are changes, but I'm expecting a, a really positive display. But yes, that honor must be respected because they have their own fight on their own hands. That's right. Now, also, we have to discuss the fact that in the very last hours, uh, Rafael Leao renewed his contract. The long-awaited moment from the Rossoneri fans, he renewed until 2028. Trayden. It's really good news for everyone connected with the Rossoneri. He's such a wonderful player. He plays with a smile on his face, he plays with such excitement and he's a devastating forward, he's a devastating weapon when he attacks down the wing. We're seeing some of his best moments right now and there are lots of these great moments at Juzzi Adriano as we well know but uh, he is the difference maker and you want to keep hold of players like that, you want to make them feel valued, you want to make them feel special and you can maybe build something very, very important for, you, for the future around them. Adriano. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Look, I think the, the smile on Leal's face when he plays, I think every fan that learns of this news very shortly will have that same smile because we've spoken about how this Milan team really need to, to build and maintain that consistency and building around those key components like Rafael Leal is just crucial for the continued development of this squad now going into the coming season. So it's wonderful news to cap off a very strong finish to the season. And look, these highlights, hopefully we see plenty more of them to come next season and beyond. Now we're going to be listening to his very first words since the renewal in a very special location. Molto, molto contento perché già era quello che, che volevo io. Ho fatto sentire anche a Milan, a tutti i dirigenti e ai miei compagni, cosa che, che voleva fare, che era restare. E è arrivato il momento giusto, abbiamo riuscito a trovare un accordo e continuare la mia storia qua. Voglio ringraziare tutti eh, perché quando sono arrivato qua, sono arrivato qua giovani, eh, eh, lo sapeva la dimensione di, del club, ma però quando, quando metti la maglia di, del Milan, poi vai a San Siro con i nostri tifosi, eh, non è facile. E in questi tre anni e mezzo che sono qua, quattro, eh, adesso sono, sono più abituato che i tifosi, però eh, questa maglia pesa tanto. Orgoglioso, eh, tanta voglia di, di, di continuare qua, di, di continuare a scrivere la mia storia. Quindi voglio ringraziare tutti per, per la pazienza di continuare a, a tifare per me, per noi, per la mia squadra. Sono a casa, tutti qua, anche quando vado in giro, ristoranti, tutti arrivano da me con un sorriso e questo no, no, non ce l'ho parole, quindi grazie a tutti e, e voglio continuare a fare tanti gol, tanti assist e continuare a dimostrare il mio talento. Now, as we said before, this is the very last episode of our AC Milan talk of this season. So let's sum 
everything up that happened during this season. Of course, Sheridan, Adriano, we know you had some preferences when it comes to the best matches, the best goals. I'm gonna start from you, Sheridan, because we have a graphics. Here are your choices, actually. Best match is the one against Napoli. Uh, actually, you talk to me. I will explain, absolutely. I thought about this long and hard because there have been some really great moments this season. But the best match has to be the victory at the uh, Diego Armando Maradona Stadium against Napoli, who, don't forget, they won the league. And at that point, they were flying. And the thought of Milan going to Naples and crushing them 4-0 was uh, something you can't really uh, imagine. And uh, there you go. That is um, one of the goals from Rafa Leal. And uh, the goals just uh, kept coming. It was... Uh, a match, a result that I don't think anyone really expected. Mr Pioli would have prepared the team perfectly for it and the plan would have been to go there and make something happen, shake things up a bit. But look at this goal from Brahim Diaz and a lovely celebration. We like a good celebration here on AC Milan Talk. Great. And that was a, a, a memorable celebration. Rafa Leal was on fire, as they say, scoring that goal uh, beyond uh, merit. But the final goal was uh, more great celebrations. <laughs> That's the best thing about scoring, is celebrating. And then look at this moment from, uh, is that Lionel right. Messi? <laughs> it's actually Alexis Salimakas, <laughs> but the goal was Messi-esque. Such quick footwork, dancing through the entire defence. Statistically, obviously the best defence in the league because they won the league title. Salimakas made that look very, very simple, and um, it's not. Now let's take a look at what you picked, Adriano, for this season. Of course, you chose the same match as Sheridan did, but let's take a look at the uh, best assist that you picked. Yes, Sheridan, good minds think alike. Obviously, that 0-4 at Napoli was incredible. For me to cover it, it was my favourite match I've covered all season. It was spectacular, but certainly the assist for me, this was another match I covered, just the Leao assist in that uh, recent Roma match for the very late Salamakers goal. Sheridan, I love drama. I love late, <laughs> late drama. And this, I was right behind this cross from Leao on the pitch, waiting to do a post-match interview. And look, it was a goal and a point that in the end proved pivotal for uh, Milan finishing in the top four and doing it in the fashion they did. So it was an incredible end to this match. Of course, Roma had only scored minutes prior. This was the 96th or 97th minute. Leal, cool and calm and a wonderful ball and a very nice finish by Salamekas as well. So that was my assist of the season. I think the goals, well, my, my save was Maignan. The, the end of the Tottenham leg, I, I was... That Tottenham home and away tie was quite remarkable. And obviously away from home, nil-nil in the second leg. Manyam was incredible. And the goals there, yes, they are against Lazio as one. Here's Manyam, brilliant. This, this, his performance here were, were as good as goals. And that save there on Kane late on, just a brilliant display. And again, we know how much football he missed this season. I'm really excited to see Maignan with a full season under his belt uh, in the 23-24 campaign. But there were so many highlights. We were really spoiled for choice this season. But in the end, a big tick for me. I think they really turned things around and yeah, really thrilled with my selections as well, Sheridan. All right, we will go back to your favorite goals of the season later. All right, let's go back to your graphic, Sheridan, because you chose a different assist. Brian Diaz against Udinese. Yes, it was in the opening day of the season and it was for uh, Brian Diaz's very good footwork. If you see this uh, assist from behind the goal, that's actually the better angle to look at it from because he does uh, three numeri tricks or numeri as we say in Italy, including a through the legs and nutmeg or a tunnel. And then he puts it on a plate for his teammates. So it was a really, really nice piece of skill and a really nice opening to the season. All right, and also best save from Maignan, the one against Inter. That's right, that was against uh, Inter in the championship and the way he just uh, flew like an eagle to deny Chanloglu. If you look at this juicy Adriano, remember, Mike Maignan is a large, powerful man and he flew through the air, uh, air like, a, like a hawk, like an right. eagle. And to, to do that and to get a strong arm to it, that is incredible. You don't see saves like that every day. Well, you probably do if you go to training and watch uh, <laughs> Mike Menon with his uh, coaching staff. But the power of the shot was heading for the top corner. It had effect on it. It was curling away. And Mike just launched himself and he just flew like an angel. 
All right, Adriano, let's go back to your graphic, to your top three goals of the season. Let's see what you picked. Uh, Brahim Diaz against Tottenham, Teo Hernandez against Lazio, Rafael Leao against Napoli, but what was your favorite? If you had to pick one. Look, I think the, te the Teo goal was spectacular. Leao's performance against Napoli was unbelievable. Brahim Diaz, the goal against Tottenham, wasn't the best goal, but just given the, the situation, the round of 16, that's why I put it in there. But for me, this was the goal of the season. The the run, the finish by Theo <laughs> Hernandez. To do that in those conditions, under that pressure, in a must-win match, let's not forget how important this match was against Lazio only a few weeks ago. And the assist from Maignan as well. He really can do it all. It was a, a fantastic play and, well, what a goal, what a moment and certainly one of the very best of the season in any competition. Also, Sheridan, you made three choices, but let's see what you picked for the season in general and then let's go into what you think was the best goal of the season in general. See, uh, Salem Makers against Napoli, Leao against Inter and uh, Teo against Lazio. We've, we've already seen Salem Makers against Napoli and that was just a, that was a PlayStation style goal. Um, Adriano has spoken very eloquently about uh, Teo Hernandez's super goal against Lazio, but this for me is the goal of the season. Nice flick from Giroud and then Raphael just takes on the Inter defence and then passes it <laughs> into the bottom corner Celebration itself deserves some kind of award. I don't know what he was doing, but when you score a goal like that, you can do whatever you like. But the way he just cut through into his defense and he didn't blast it into the net, he didn't panic, he just passed it into the, into the bottom far corner and to score against the Cousins, the, uh, the, uh, bl the black and blue Cousins, it is always a fantastic moment. So that is my goal of the season, I have to say. Now we summed everything up about the season of AC Milan and we have great news for the off-the-pitch activities. Well, you're holding something really special, Sheridan. I am. It's the first look at the shirt for next season, the 2023-2024 home shirt. It's a modern twist on the red and black stripes, the uh, house classic. And I have to say, it's splendid. It's made by Puma, and I think it will be a very big hit. I don't know what you think, Adriano. Very smart, Sheridan. I'd love to see you in that, but I think uh, I think the, the boys and, and the women will play very well in that shirt next season. Looking forward to it. I think it will look better on professional football players than it will on me, <laughs> but I'm sure it will be a smash hit with everyone. Beautiful new shirt of AC Milan produced by Puma, and I have to say, Adriano, it looks good on you also, but we're taking a look at the official <laughs> clip CDM. Uh, celebrating the uh, city, not only the city and not only uh, the club, it's beautiful, the clip as well. Adriano, everyone is wearing it at their best style in it. They are, you look good, you play good, Theo, with his or maybe my blonde hair next season, guys, as we've discussed. But no, look, it's, it's very fashionable, very stylish, another classic kit coming in. Look, I'm, I'm looking forward to next season already. I know there's still one round to play, but a couple of months ago and the new season gets underway. And in this shirt, big things ahead. Adriano, um, the shirt and you want one? I would That's like... That's not for you. It's, well, we'll, we'll, you we'll see about that. It might be coming home with me. You have to, uh, you'll have to make sure, check my bag as I leave. <laughs> but no, it's a really good... How war and secure. Um, for Milan, Milan the city, <laughs> Milan, sorry, Milan the team, Milan the city. It's uh, what more could you want? As Adriano says, look good, play well, and uh, they will look the part with this. All right, now we've discussed everything about the after pitch activities with the new shirt, and we're going to jump into the world of our AC Milan women. Beautiful victory for our girls in the very last match of the season, and it was a very important game because it was actually the derby against Inter Sheridan. What a really good way to end the season. What a really good way to close the matches of uh, this calendar year, 2023, uh, to beat Inter away. It was a, a good match. It was a tight match. It wasn't an easy match. 
but the uh, ladies persevered and uh, really stood toe to toe with Inter. Inter have got some very dangerous players that cause problems, but uh, the team just uh, held on and got the result, got the win late on. And this is uh, the goal. Uh, this is Christy Grimshaw, the Scottish Dynamo, winning it in midfield. And it just keeps going, she keeps going and blasts it into the far corner. And that was very late on. And you can see what it meant to Christy and her teammates. She's such a popular player with the rest of the squad and the fans. And it was a really good goal, deserving to win any match, but particularly a derby. She just drove through the midfield and a really good low finish. And just a great way to finish the season, a great way to finish 2023, uh, 2022, 2023's official matches. A wonderful goal. Right, Adriano, it's the second victory in four derbies for our girls. Absolutely. And I always recall earlier in this calendar year, Sheridan always said the one tough spot for them was the heavy defeat in the derby. So avenging defeat there and really ending on a high. Again, I think a lot of positivity about this finish to the season. And I feel the girls are going to be ready in a few months' time when that next season gets underway. So hopefully competing on all fronts. And next season, I do feel, and I think you will agree, Sheridan, the target has to be a top two, a return to the Champions League. And I think on what we've seen in recent weeks, that's absolutely a possibility. Right, since it's the very last episode of the season, as we mentioned before, we have another graphic of your uh, favorite, actually, uh, match of the season. Adriano, let's start from you. This was a, a, an incredible match, this one. A statement performance against uh, the defending champions in Juventus. And a 4-3, it had it all. Plenty of goals, obviously plenty of action, lead changes and more. And look, this really set the standard, this set the bar that this Milan women's team are, are, are a serious team and can compete with the very best. And I know I've said it in some recent shows, but this is the exact same Juventus team that made it to the quarterfinals of the Women's Champions League last season, narrowly losing to Lyon, a powerhouse in women's football. So the girls had to have taken plenty of confidence from this. Sure, the season was very long. This was back in October, but I think a, a really, really important performance, not only how exciting it was, but just to prove to them how good they really are. Sheridan. It was a, it was a fantastic match to commentate on. I'm sure it was a great match for the fans and for the neutrals as well. But as Adriano says, putting four goals up against Juventus is not easy. What did you pick, though? My choice was another derby victory. It's great when you can talk about multiple victories in the derby, but was the 3-1 against Inter um, earlier on before the, uh, the one at the weekend. And it was just a really good performance. Because <coughs> Again, it was a very balanced match. It wasn't as if Milan crushed Inter, because Inter are a really good team with some players that can really hurt you if you uh, leave them unmarked. And this was um, a tough game. Inter pulled it back, made it 1-1. The assist there by uh, Tabita Chawinga, one of their really dangerous wide players. And Milan had to really sort of uh, coax their powers and get back into the game. And they did exactly that with Martina Piemonte just showing her strength and her finishing power to make it 2-1. And then uh, it was 3-1, not long after, which was uh, the cherry atop the cake, because as, as I said a few moments ago, it's always great beating Inter, but this was a really convincing win. And uh, Vigilucci passing it into the bottom corner there to seal a 3-1 victory over the Nerazzurri. It's almost time to close this episode together, but let's close it with the under-19. The last game of Abadis uh, under-19 ended in a nil-nil against Sassuolo. Sheridan, let's start from there. Yes, I mean, it's, uh, there's not much more you can say, really. It wasn't a classic, <laughs> but I think the, uh, the, the young men, Mr. Abadis' young team, have made really good strides this year, have shaken off a really difficult start. The fact that they're on that side of the table shows that the uh, first portion of the season didn't really go too well. But after that, they really uh, they galvanized their quality and their fighting spirit, and they did very well in Europe. And uh, they, they turned it around, and there were some really good moments this season, particularly after Christmas for the, uh, the youngsters. Right, Adriano, let's comment on the game. 
Well, that's right. Obviously, a match in the end that was effectively a, a dead rubber for, for Milan. Not too much to, to take away, but uh, just another 90 minutes. And look, a nil-nil against Sassuolo. Fine. And as Sheridan said, it's it's been progressive improvement for Abate's men this season. But when we reflect on this campaign, it will be remembered very fondly, obviously, for the run in Europe. And look... We've always discussed it, but balancing commitments domestically and in Europe is tough for any club at any level. And so for these young men coming through, gathering experience, both at this level in Serie A, but also against the very uh, in European football, it was a phenomenal achievement by them. And I'm looking forward to keeping an eye on a lot of these players because I think many have a bright future ahead. Also, as you mentioned before, Sheridan, our under-19 did very well in this season. Youth League reaching the Final Four for the first time in their history. And these are the best matches that you chose. Actually, both times are the Youth League games. Adriano, let's start from you. Sheridan, I like your game, but the Atletico win has to be the <laughs> sorry. one. It absolutely has to be the one. No, no need to be sorry. That, that's just incredible. Obviously, the Atletico team who were heavily favoured and obviously one leg at home, but it was a fine performance, a, a thrilling win, drama-filled, and coming in in a period where the domestic form was still a little inconsistent. So to have pulled off this victory, I think this will remain a very very important memory for a lot of these young men for a long time to come so really really special to watch this and yeah i think that was the highlight by far this season yeah Sheridan. naturally i agree this was an outstanding performance against a very difficult opponent atletico madrid and i think it's when the team started to really believe in themselves and think that they had a chance of doing something special i chose the match against chelsea because chelsea's under 19 side is very very good and this was when uh, Milan were just sort of shaking themselves out of their lethargy of uh, the difficult start of the season. But it was a really spirited performance and uh, it was a, a sign that this team have got a European dimension. The shot was from, uh, from Elil Ali and then Gabriele Alesi put it in the net. And, and Chelsea was shocked. Chelsea was shaken up. I don't think they expected Milan to be so clinical. I mean, that is a really good team goal. Maybe the Chelsea defending wasn't the best you'll see this season, but that's not Milan's problem. Milan just looked really slick, played a very intelligent game in this match, very patient counter-attacking football, and this was the goal to make it uh, three for Milan. It was a rocket. So it was a really good, what I call every week, a European performance, Juicy. Now we've discussed it all from the first team to the women's team to the under-19. It's a wrap for this season. Sheridan Bird, thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adriano. I hope everyone enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. We've had some fun. We've seen some great goals and it's been a really good journey. And uh, thank you to everybody. Adriano, you mentioned many times that this day was your favorite one of the week. It won't be for the yes, summer I did. anymore. <laughs> it's okay. There's a busy summer ahead, but we'll be back. I've enjoyed it every week. It has been a lot of fun with you both and have really hoped that the fans have enjoyed it as well. So it's been a great to cover this half of the season and looking forward to plenty more to come. But as always, a pleasure. All right. Thank you very much for being with us in the very last month. We will see you back very soon. Thank you. This was our AC Milan Talk. Ciao.